Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here at Hope Today, and it's a fabulous Monday. And guess what? You and I are in the kingdom of God, and there's no place I'd rather be than right here with all of us tuning in right now. I'm J. Anthony Gilbert alongside with Anna Schmidt. Yes. Good Hello. to see you. It is good to be here with you as well, and it's good to be with you. We are strengthened as we come together as the body of Christ. So thank you so much for being with us. Well, if you have lived some years on this planet, you know very well that life often turns out differently than we thought. And when life throws us that curveball, we find ourselves face to face with grief. Our guest today, Pastor Steve Carter, a former lead pastor at the famous Willow Creek Community Church, joins us in just a few minutes to share about his season of grief that followed the aftermath of misconduct allegations against lead pastor Bill Hybels. Through that season, God equipped him to help others walk well through their own season of grief. Wow. Jay, this is going to be a powerful conversation today. It is, because you know what? We've all faced grief, and if you haven't faced grief, sooner or later, if you live long enough, That's right. you're going to face something. And grief, you know, comes in a lot of different areas, too. It's not just, you know, dealing with, like, the loss of a loved one. Mm -hmm. It could be the loss of a job. It could be a, a loss in financial status. Whatever it is, it is going to be really good. And we also have, coming up on Hope Today, an inspirational, meaningful Monday story about a worship singer who has dealt a, what, a devastating diagnosis and how she was able to use that sorrow as fuel to ignite her faith. You know what I love about the bookend of all of this? You're gonna start off dealing with grief. We're gonna leave out inspired and full of hope today. I know, that's right. And even the cool thing is as we talk about grief that, and you're gonna hear Pastor Steve talk about, it's grief is a friend, it is not a foe, yeah. and that God is with us through every step of that and that there is hope and there is life again and restoration. And so today we do welcome Pastor Steve Carter. In 2018, in light of the misconduct allegations against Willow Creek Community Church founder and senior pastor Bill Hybels, Steve Carter announced publicly that he was resigning from his dream job as, lead as a lead teaching pastor at that church. Working through his deep season of grief that followed, he now shares the tools and practices he learned to help others work through their own grief, not against it. So Steve, it is good to have you with us today. Welcome to Hope Today. It is an honor to be with you. Thanks so much for having me, Anna and Pastor Jay. Yeah, absolutely. So can you take us back to that deep season of grief and just share a little bit of your experience and all of your emotions? Yeah, so I think the, the question is, what do you do when life does what it so often does? When it surprises you, it shocks you, when what you didn't see coming shows up at your front door. And that's what happened in 2018. Um, as you mentioned in the introduction, um, it was my dream job. And I saw the next 25 years of my life there, getting to pastor an incredible congregation in an amazing city, doing what I love to do, sharing the good news. And then it all just started to fall apart as allegations came out um, in the newspaper, the Chicago Tribune, the New York Times, about allegations of abuse that um, came to be true about my mentor. And I watched um, a beautiful church um, really rally around their pastor and not actually stand with the women and the victims. And I ended up stepping out just in trying to stand with the women. And it was like overnight, I didn't have a job. Overnight, I didn't know what was next. Overnight, what I thought was my future now had took in a sudden curve and um, it was really, really hard. And my family and I, we moved to the desert and it was in the desert that, um, you know, the desert comes from the concept of the deserted place. It was in that deserted place that God really met me um, and really healed me and put me back together. Um, so yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a trying, trying time. One other thing I'd say is after, shortly after I left Willow, um, my dad died. And so within a matter of months, it was like my spiritual father and earthly father. Um, and it just was a lot for me and having to rely on my heavenly father to get me through. 
Yeah, absolutely. And it was in that season that God whispered three words to you. Those were grieve, breathe and receive, which is the title of your newest book. So share with us a bit of what those words mean to you and that journey. Yeah, those words came the day after I resigned. I was begging God for just some words. I, I, I needed something, some sense of guidance. And those three words came, grieve, breathe, receive. And I went to a coffee shop and I just started to write, I got to grieve what is, grieve what I thought it was going to be, grieve how key people let me down. I have to breathe in the new mercies that are present every morning and exhale all the bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness. And I have to receive what I need to learn, receive, if anything, what I need to own and receive who Christ wants me to become um, because of all of this. And those three words kind of became this guiding light um, to really help me heal well. And one day, those three words, um, I was hiking in Arizona and I realized, oh my goodness, Holy Weekend, Good Friday, Silent Saturday, Easter Sunday, really fall in line with grieve, breathe, receive. And that kind of framework of Holy Weekend, Good Friday, you know, Jesus didn't deserve it. When you're going through grief, whatever it is that you didn't deserve, um, you think about Silent Saturday, the disciples didn't know it was coming next. And then the surprise of Sunday, resurrection. And I began to recognize in our grief, 1 Thessalonians 4, 4, that we are people who grieve with hope. We grieve the fullness of Friday, but we always know that Sunday is coming. And that was a real shaping framework to help me um, get through it. Mm -hmm. So tell us, how did you hold on to hope when all hope felt lost? Yeah, well, I, I think some people ask me, you know, when the church kind of imploded in some ways, did I ever lose kind of hope in the church? And I was like, no, the church didn't hurt me. Five people did. Um, I, I love Willow. I, I love everyone involved. And, and yet for me, Jesus didn't hurt me. The church didn't hurt me. It was just five people who, who made some decisions that I didn't think were the best. And when I look at hope, the biblical concept of hope is so different than how we use it today. I mean, oftentimes when we talk about hope, it's, you know, I, I hope, you know, my favorite football team makes the Super Bowl. You know, we, we kind of use it as a, as a form of like preaching uncertainty. I hope there's no traffic on my way to work. But biblical hope is different. To, to have biblical hope, that means you, you desire something good. Like if heaven were to invade a moment, what would, you, what would it actually look like? And also, you believe that anything is possible. As my friend, Pastor Joby Martin says, if the tomb is empty, anything is possible. And so you look at your situation and go, what's trickier, what's harder to actually reconcile this relationship or heal from this grief or raise a man from the grave? And I'm gonna say raise a man from a grave is more difficult. And when I think about desiring something good, believing anything is possible, why? Because resurrection brings certainty. That's what, that's what we as Christians have, is that we know Sunday has happened and Sunday is coming. And because of that, we can expect that good is on its way. And so for me, hope was just allowing myself to desire healing, believing anything is possible because resurrection brings certainty and expecting the goodness of God, as Romans 8, 28 teaches us, is on its way. Such a beautiful word of encouragement. And one thing that I loved about your book is that you were very real and raw, transparent in telling your story. So when we are, when somebody is watching today and they are in that season of grief where their emotions are raw and they are feeling anger and hurt and rejection, I know you felt those as well. What is a Christian to do with all of those hard, ugly emotions, especially when it feels like this is not how I'm supposed to act as a believer, but what do I do with them? Anna, that's a great question. I, I mean, for me, I found myself just reading the Psalms yeah. 
And it's amazing. I mean, if you ever read the Psalms, David is is wild. I mean, he'll say things, you know, I want my enemy's head to be crushed by a rock. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, it's just this like he's but I think what he's doing is he's going to God with it so that it's a safe place for him to process. And so you need to find the safe place that is God that is maybe a, a pastor, maybe uh, some dear friends, maybe even a therapist, but to have a, a safe community that you can process it. There's something that happens when it comes to grief where many of us in our kind of Christian faith don't think that we can actually name it. And I think we have to name what day of the weekend are we in? Are we in Friday? You're in grief? Name it. What caused the grief? Name that. If you feel like you're walking through the desert season of Silent Saturday, name that. I'm not sure what's coming. I'm trying to stay open. I'm a little bit worried. I'm a little bit uncertain. Will I ever get to the other side? And if you find yourself being surprised by God's presence or God's goodness or God's healing, you get to say that you're on Sunday and you get to have that. But I think what it means to be human as Romans teaches us, is to mourn with those who mourn and rejoice with those who rejoice. So the more that we know how to mourn our Friday and rejoice in our Sunday, the better off that we will be to hold space for others who are mourning and rejoicing as well. Yeah, I love that so much and that it is good and important to recognize that we are human and God can handle our tough emotions and come into that place and comfort and strengthen us. So as you work through that, I know one of the things that helped me a lot to just be free in that season of grief was to work through the process of forgiving those who had hurt me. What was that like for you? How did you walk through forgiveness? And I'll tell you, that was the hardest one for me, um, because when you recognize that there were people's choices that kind of affected your kind of future, it gets really, really tricky. And I, I don't think I would have thought I had unforgiveness in my heart, but I realized as I was processing with some mentors, oh, wow, I really, really do did. And so I did a deep dive in the Greek words found in the New Testament for forgiveness. And the first one is a Femi, and that's used uh, in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who are indebted to us. And a Femi comes from Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, which literally means to release and send it away. And that's what they would do. The, the nation of Israel put their sins on this goat that would be basically released out into the wild and sent away. And it was this beautiful prop that the sin was being sent away. The second word Paul uses is charismai. He uses it in Ephesians chapter 4. And charis is the word uh, where we get the word grace. And zomai means the grace I receive, I freely give away. And what I realize is, is, is forgiveness is always going to take me first back to the cross. And I have to remember the grace I've received. And then I have a choice. Will I give that same grace away? Will I release them and send it back to the cross? And so every time those five people um, would come to mind, I would say this simple prayer, cross, release, send it away. And sometimes I would pray it 40 times in a day because I'd get on Twitter and I'd be reminded of the pain and the hurt. But I realized unforgiveness is a seed. And if it gets logged in our heart, that's where bitterness, resentment, anger, gossip, rage, brawling, all of malice is going to come out. And what we need to do is be the kind of people who just kind of cleanse our system. And that's the gift of forgiveness because forgiveness is a solo sport. Reconciliation takes more people. And so learning to forgive changed everything for me. Pastor Steve, you know, one of the things that I think this book is so apropos right now because everything that's going on, we see a lot of ministers falling to moral failure. Uh, we're seeing it more and more. And I, sadly, I think it's just the beginning. I think there's going to be a whole lot more that's going to pop up. Two quick questions for you. Uh, one, how did you not, or did you lose respect for that pastor? Did God give you the ability to reconcile 
back with that, uh, with these relationships that were fallen, or um, have you moved on? And then the other thing I want to mention, just encourage the people, how do you move forward now? How did God take you out of this and open up a new chapter for your life? Yeah, so I think it's a really difficult piece um, when you have a spiritual mentor um, fall. And that can be in a multitude of ways, whether abuse of power, financial abuse, sexual abuse. There's just a number of different ways um, that that can happen. Um, and I've had to really l just kind of reflect back and almost have these moments of gratitude for all that I did learn. I mean, there, there's not a Sunday that goes by that I don't remember something that Bill Hybels taught me. And, and, and that both creates some, like, beautiful memory in my heart and also a sense of sadness. Um, we haven't had a chance to reconcile yet. Um, the other five people and I haven't had a chance. But that's something that I pray for. I pray that I get that chance to sit across the table and we get to talk through um, what actually really happened. Um, for anybody who is who's walking in a season of grief. I just want to tell you, I'm sorry. This was not God's intent and God's hope, but what we do have is that gift of God walking with us. When it comes to formation, um, you, you, we all have these little simple truths, you know, God is with us. God will never leave us nor forsake us. And then all of a sudden we find ourselves in the struggle, uh, in the suffering, in the pain, I feel like we're being punched in the gut with that loss of a relationship, that betrayal, that abandonment, that affair, that death, that, that death of a dream job. And in those moments and in that struggle, we have to ask ourselves, does that simple phrase hold up? And for me, it did. It did in a, a very, very deep way. And what I found was God is with me. God does care that God is going to heal me, that God is going to work on for my good and on my behalf. And the same is true for you. And so what happens is that simple statement goes through the struggle and now becomes wildly sacred and weighty. And so when I say God is with me, man, I have this lived theology, a lived experience. And so for me, I find myself on the other side of the grief of 2018 and I'm getting to pastor still, I'm getting to write, I'm getting to, to really walk with people who are in grief in their Friday and trying to remind them to hold out hope because Sunday is coming. Oh, so good. And so Pastor Steve, in the last little bit that we have, can you uh, just pray for somebody who is going through a deep season of grief? I would love to. Uh, let's pray. God, I'm just praying right now uh, for my brothers and sisters who are tuning in. I'm praying the words of Zephaniah 317, that they would know that the Lord God is with them. He is mighty to save. He takes great delight in them. He rejoices over them with singing. And I'll quiet them and remind them of your love. And I love how it says the Lord God is with you. It's the first name of your son, Emmanuel, God with us. And that he's mighty to save. It's the second name, Yeshua, Jesus, that he's mighty to rescue. Salvation is here. And the reason is why? Because he delights in you. He delights in what you are walking through right now because he knows what is possible on the other side. And on Sunday mornings, we sing songs to God, but I love how that verse says, God is singing songs over us. And I pray that you hear heaven's melody over you right now. And if you're really fighting through anxiety and fear and worry, I love how that last line of that verse says, he will quiet you and remind you that you are loved. So Lord, I pray those words over the listeners and the viewers right now. Bless them and keep them. We pray all this in your name, amen. Amen. Pastor Steve, your book is called Grieve, Breathe, Receive, Finding a Faith Strong Enough to Hold Us. Thank you so much for your courage, your transparency, and for the hard work that you did working through grief so that you can share it with us. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Anna. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Don't go anywhere because we'll be back with more right after this.
The barriers that stand between you and a blessed life may feel insurmountable, but Dr. Robert Jeffers assures you they can be overcome. This month, when you give your most generous gift to Cornerstone Television, we'll send you Dr. Jeffers' new book, Invincible, Conquering the Mountains that Separate You from the Blessed Life. Offering biblical insight and practical tools, he explains how you can conquer the hindrances of doubt, guilt, anxiety, discouragement, fear, and bitterness through prayer and faith in a God whose strength can move mountains. Request your copy when you support the gospel ministry of Cornerstone Television. Your generosity will evangelize the lost, encourage believers, provide excellent Bible teaching, and so much more. Call us today and become invincible, conquering the mountains that separate you from the blessed life. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving. As promised, we have a meaningful Monday story, and this story highlights gospel artist Sarah Tabo, who was told by medics she may never sing again after being diagnosed with thyroid cancer. The mother of the two underwent urgent surgery to remove a cancerous tumor and struggled to process what this could mean for her career. Although devastated by this news, Sarah remained faithful that God would guide her through this difficult journey towards recovery. Though she struggled with the diagnosis and initially even rejected it, she remembered going to God and just asking him one question, why? It was in this place of vulnerability that God comforted and told her that if she never had a sickness, she would never know him to be her healer. She went on to say, sometimes as Christians, we wanna go through life without any challenges, but it is through the challenges that we put our faith to the test and prove that God is truly who he says he is. Sarah's surgery was successful and she sings and praises God like never before. She said, this experience reminded me how gracious and truly merciful God is. Even in moments when we seem to lose our faith, he still remains faithful. Thanks to Christian Today for that wonderful, wonderful article. You know, we go through a lot of things a lot of times, Anna, in our life and in our world, and things can hit us with a curveball. But I love what she put in there about how God is always faithful, he's, he's merciful, and he gives us what we need when we need it. Yeah, he absolutely does. And, you know, I just appreciate these conversations so much today because we don't have to live very many years on this earth to experience that deep season of grief. and. I just remember being back in that dark time where I literally just felt like I was walking through hell on earth and being in church with singing these worship, these choruses that talked about how God never fails us. And it was in that season that I was feeling like God was failing me because how could he let this happen? How in that immense pain were, were things not working back together the way I thought that they should work back together? And I just cried out to him. It was really when I, I felt like this crisis of faith where truly it was like, God, are you who you say you are? And Pastor Jay, I had to dig deep into scripture yeah. and lean on those promises of God and just rely on his strength and his grace to hold me in that season while he did show himself himself faithful. Well, you know what's really amazing as you're talking, I remember us having conversations yeah. about that time and that journey that you ended. And even as he was talking, you know, I'm looking at your life and man, I tell you what, you have definitely been in a death, burial, resurrection. Mm -hmm. You went through that dark season and then you went through a time where you kind of like breathe Right. And now God has blessed you. Now, how long have you been married now? Yeah, so I got married in February. Yep. And it truly is beautiful what God does with the ashes come of on. our life. Like That's he right. does talk about how beauty will come from the ashes. And it's interesting when we think about a shattered life and we hear in the Christian, Christian teachings how he'll take all those broken pieces and he puts them back together again. And then he shines brightly, even brighter through those cracks of our life. But what happens when we're in that place where we're more than shattered? We yeah. feel like dust. 
And it's awesome, Pastor Jay, because we, all we have to do is go back to the very beginning of the That's Bible right. in Genesis, where God created life out of dust. Man and woman, he breathed his breath of life into that man and woman. And so today, as you feel like your life is shattered to dust, remember, as you feel yourself breathe, just fill your lungs with that air right now and know Amen. that it is the breath of God in you, literally sustaining your life today. And if you still have breath in your lungs, then friend, know that God is not finished with you yet. And he will not waste our pain, that he will bring beauty from the ashes. And he promises to redeem and restore and rebuild your life. And I'm a living testimony of that. Yes, I know Pastor Steve is a testimony of that. And if he can do it for us, he could do it for you, Pastor Jay. And you know what's amazing? You've gone through everything you've went through and you don't even smell like smoke. Amen. I mean, you know, you're like the three Hebrew boys. They went through that fiery furnace, but God was with them. And I believe there's many of you watching right now that you're in the middle of a furnace and you know, all the heat is, it said, turn up the heat seven times hotter than before. But you know what's amazing? When things get difficult, you're walking through the grief, you're walking through the dark times. Jesus always shows up in the furnace. And I don't know where you are, but there's somebody watching right now that you need God to show up in your furnace. And I'm telling you, he is there. You need to stay tuned for the end of the story. Don't quit in the season that you're in because God is gonna have you turn the page and there's gonna be another day for you. Resurrection is coming. If you can just hold on just a little bit longer, God wants to bring you through the situation. He's working your testimony. Every great man or woman of God that has ever been greatly used by God was forsaken. Even Jesus, Anna, was forsaken on the cross. He was on, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But listen, when it seems like you've been forsaken, that's the time to look up and to praise God. Because if Jesus was forsaken, Joseph was forsaken, David felt isolated, guess what? They all had a resurrection coming. And I believe there's a resurrection coming for you. So if you need prayer, we just want you to call in and dial 888-665-4483 and let a prayer partner know, I want agreement for my resurrection is coming. Yeah, amen. We want you to know today that God's promises are for you. They are your truth. They are your reality. God stands at the beginning and end of all things, and he stands victorious at the end of your suffering. And that means that you are victorious in all things. So cling to him, hide yourself in him, and remember to let him breathe life into you today.